Reject modern day feminism, embrace femininity. Traditional women don't exist anymore. There's something about women who embrace their traditional roles. Hashtag trad woman. Stay at home girlfriends embracing traditional femininity. And of course the role of a traditional woman. Where are the traditional women of today? What is wrong with those of us who want to live a subservient lifestyle in which our husband provides whilst we look after the home and the children? And why are modern day women shaming traditional women for this? That's not very hashtag feminist. The truth of the matter is, they're not. They might question the trust of a young stay at home girlfriend who is dependent on their boyfriend financially. And they might criticise the longevity of these positions, but that's something they're entitled to do, right? See, feminism isn't about shaming women into being the way the feminists want you to be. If anything, feminists campaign for that right to choose. The ability to choose instead of being expected to uphold gender roles or go against them. A lot of these claims that feminists hate trad women, etc. are manufactured outrage, because in reality, feminism is the other to traditional gender roles. Without feminism or other egalitarian practices, these roles wouldn't be questioned. However, they are, and so are deemed the enemy of feminism. In reality, feminism is the enemy of traditional gender roles, but traditional gender roles aren't necessarily the enemy of feminism. The enemy of feminism is inequality that results from the compulsory traditional gender roles encouraged by conservative societies. What if I was to tell you that the reason why traditional women don't exist nowadays isn't necessarily due to the feminist agenda against and hatred of conservative women? On the one hand, efforts to increase gender equality and campaigns for choice of men and women in the roles of their relationships or their homes or their roles in wider society has had an impact, as being the traditional home wife or the breadwinner husband is no longer the default or the only option that people face. Especially with an increase of awareness around different sexualities and genders, the nuclear family is no longer seen as the norm. To be honest, it actually still is, but it's no longer, like, enforced legally. <laughs> Though people might face oppression still and bigotry for going against that norm, they can do that now without risking prison time. But also with the cost of living going up, coming out of an economic crisis due to Covid, as well as modern society pushing this sense of neoliberalism and independence in its people, the traditional woman has become a paradox. And in the fight for equality, real equality, the role of the traditional man is deemed undesirable, either consciously or subconsciously, by those who are trying to bring attention to the plight that men face in society, such as custody rights, men's mental health and suicide rates. It's not that in fighting for equality, activism has sought to wipe out traditional men and women, it's more that fighting for equality alleviates men and women from the oppression that is included in the traditional gender roles. But let's break down the terminology and definitions first before we dive into that argument I, I would say it's like it's a, a woman that's pure she's youthful um and if she's not youthful she's married as many channels like this one like to point out traditional women are either youthful and pure or married and the home is their priority but what are gender roles as a whole well a simple definition is that gender roles are the expectations stereotypes and behavior expected of people because of their gender and these expectations expectations come from societal norms. To break it down in a very whitewashed, heteronormative, cisnormative, basic way, there are three types of gender roles. There's probably more, but there are mainly three types in Western society. First, you have the traditional gender roles, you know, the ones that society expected out of people hundreds of years ago. Traditional gender roles expect women to be polite, nurturing, and caring for the house. Women are to listen to their husbands and, in most cases, not work so that they can take care of their children. Women are to be hyper-feminine, so essentially overdoing all the female stereotypes to be the most feminine person you can be. In modern society, we may argue that not having children doesn't make you any less feminine, whether that be a choice or otherwise, but in traditional gender roles, that's 
kind of a crucial thing. For men, traditional gender roles expect them to be aggressive, the sole caretaker of the family, and to not show any emotions. Except anger, because you know, anger and aggression kind of go hand in hand. These men are hyper-masculine, so over-stereotype male characteristics like strength, sexuality, and wealth. And by sexuality, we obviously mean heterosexuality, because it's okay to express male heterosexuality, but any other sexuality nan don't flaunt that. Don't do that. You might be accused of shoving it down people's throats or being a whore. We also have the theory of egalitarian gender roles, which is based upon the concept of an egalitarian society or an equal society. This society believes that everyone should be equal and should be treated the same and have the same access to all opportunities. In egalitarian societies, this concept refers to both social class and gender, but when focusing on gender, here men and women in relationships would both work, both take care of the house and both raise the children. It would essentially be a 50-50 split. Instead of only opening doors for women, you would hold doors open for everyone, which is something that I do because that's just the polite thing to do. You also wouldn't be paid for by your date. You would most likely split the bill or cover them and then they'd cover you at a later date, etc. And finally, the most common one is transitional gender roles, which is kind of like a stepping stone between traditional and egalitarian gender roles. In transitional gender roles, the man is still the primary source of income and often works more hours or has a higher paid job. But the woman has more freedom outside of the traditional position and may pursue a career outside of homemaking. Whilst countless women have careers and companies and children, this is the type of gender role that kind of fits most with Western societies. Typically, the man is still the breadwinner, and whilst the woman can work, she can only until she has to sacrifice a part of her career for her children. Yeah. So there's still an element of tradition in transitional gender roles, right? Does it seem fair though? Do you think that women must sacrifice their career in order to have children? You know, let's not even like think about the effect that pregnancy will have on your body. The idea that a woman's job is to look after the children whilst the father works, that it is the woman's job to feed the household and provide in that way, limits the life that the woman can lead within that relationship. So why do the feminists have a problem? Why do they hate traditional women and why are they shaming them, apparently? Well, the issue isn't necessarily that traditional gender roles encourage that way of living if that is the way that both genders wish to live. The issue comes when society pressures us into living in that way and when that choice is therefore removed. The issue with traditional gender roles is that they produce inequality, not only within the dynamics of the relationship, but for each gender, not just women specifically. As well as this, the ideas of traditional gender roles come from sexism assumptions about gender, which we are trying to move away from, so understandably, feminists might not like the traditional roles. Social norms surrounding family and gender roles undoubtedly have complex origins, but in popular discourse in the West, they are often justified by biological arguments. For example, the male breadwinner female homemaker family may be considered the natural way of things because of the assumption that women are biologically designed to bear and raise children whilst men provide for them. By this assumption, the women would have no time for anything other than looking after the household and popping up babies, and the husband would have no time for anything like looking after the household because he is out working to provide for the household. At this point in the 21st century, I'd like to assume that we all agree that we are far more than our biology, however you will still see conservatives relying on these talking points to argue why men are better leaders than women, and drawing on sexist stereotyping of emotions and vulnerability and femininity, so if a woman is passionate she's too emotional, but if she stays cool and collected she's cold and callous, so there is nothing that women can do right anyway. Sadly, what is often ignored are the dangerous stereotyping of hypermasculinity on men and by consequence on women. With the emphasis that men are not to show any emotion, we fall into the stigma against men who suffer from mental health issues or are sensitive and can convey their emotions. The traditional gender role encourages men to suppress this, not 
open up about it. I'm not saying that that's what masculinity encourages, but more that this idea and this interpretation of masculinity has a damaging effect. If strength is a factor of masculinity, I would argue that emotional strength, the ability to express your emotions and work on them, and ask for help, is as masculine as physical strength. However, according to traditional male gender roles, emotion is a weakness and emotional strength isn't the ability to understand and work through your emotions, but the ability to keep them buried. And it's this kind of stigma that leads to inequality regarding men's mental health. And it's quite interesting that in this sector of people that campaign for traditional gender roles, specifically the traditional male role, you might also find men's rights activists, you might also find pickup artists, alpha males, and then you might find some more of the extreme groups. But under this manosphere, people will tend to always point out the inequality that men suffer whilst pushing for the traditional male role that enforces that inequality. <laughs> so people will argue for equality in men's mental health whilst pushing for the traditional male role. They will make arguments regarding custody rights, with the biological assumption being that women have to be nurturing and men emotionless, so women tend to be awarded custody. And often the argument for that traditional male role clashes with that argument for male equality when it comes to custody rights. For women in traditional gender roles, their financial security relies on the man. And the idea that the wife must listen to the husband and not question him, there is a danger that this agreement becomes a source of control. This relies on the man to make the best decision for the family and then allow the woman to fulfil her role to enact these decisions. That's a lot of pressure to put on one person and an extremely submissive role for the woman. So instead of it being a partnership, it kind of becomes a dictatorship. And if the man was to get sick or be out of a job, then everything comes crumbling down. And the woman would have no time for anything else outside of looking after the household, so nothing can jeopardise the man providing for the household. And with this comes pressure, anxiety and hey ho, mental health issues that you're not allowed to get treatment for because you have to show no emotion because that's how you be masculine. masculine. This is a simplified argument, but the traditional roles in themselves can be seen to accommodate abusive and controlling relationships, anxiety, stress, depression and neglect in both partners. And though emotion is argued to be a feminine thing, in a household where the woman is to listen to the man, then surely her emotions wouldn't be listened to either. And not only that, but the traditional hypermasculine role produces more stigma around male domestic abuse victims. After all, the man controls the household, right? So how on earth could he be a victim of abuse? And the woman a victim? <laughs> of the man that provides for her? Isn't it fair to assume that she should do everything he says since he's the one keeping her alive? Neither role sounds particularly thrilling, does it? A lot of arguments based on inequality are centred around these traditional roles, so is there any wonder why egalitarian movements such as feminism has campaigned for a choice? And finally, we come to the claim that you can't be a traditional woman anymore. In fact, it's a paradox. Under the current circumstances in the Western world, traditional women cannot exist in modern society. Sure, maybe in upper classes or the upper middle classes, but in working classes and the lower middle class, this gender role is very difficult to achieve. First off, we can now choose. So by a feminist standpoint, if you want to uphold traditional gender roles within your relationships where both partners consent, that's absolutely fine and go for it, even though I don't know why you'd want to do that, but that's your choice. But that's a paradox because traditional gender roles don't include choice. In this traditional gender role, the woman doesn't choose to listen to the husband, that's just what she's expected to do. It's not the man's choice to be the provider, that's the expectation. And so, because society has accommodated us with the right to choose, you can no longer, in essence, choose the traditional gender role, because to uphold them wouldn't be a choice. And so your stay-at-home girlfriend or housewife isn't a traditional woman, as this is the consequence of choice. And failing that argument, the general just isn't financially viable anymore. Often a household includes two or more working adults, which is why women tend to fulfil transitional roles. Women get up and go to work just as men do, and then they come home and look after the household. Which again, creates a kind of inequality as well, as they might be working the same hours and earning the same money, and the woman still continues to work at home by cooking, cleaning, doing the food shop, and looking after the children. 
You could argue that households are far more egalitarian with the distribution of these responsibilities, but it's still common practice for the woman to look after the household whilst working a full-time job. And even when there is distribution, because the woman traditionally looks after the household, they tend to dictate that tradition. For working class families, many can't afford for one parent to be out of work. And if they don't work and claim child benefits or welfare in order to look after the household, well, that just comes with its own load of stigma and criticisms. So unless you live in an upper middle class household that has fostered these ideas around gender roles, traditional gender roles are now incompatible with the reality that the majority of Western citizens face. And the enforcement of these roles doesn't seem desirable for anybody, as each role comes with their fair share of disadvantages. And let's not forget the theory that the nuclear family is just a way of control that inadvertently benefits capitalism. You know, the idea that traditional gender roles maximise and optimise the output of the worker. So, if you think about it, the woman at home looks after the kids, does the laundry, keeping the house tidy and cooking dinner. All of the man's energy is therefore reserved for work. And because all his energy is reserved for work, he would therefore produce the best products. The woman's role as homemaker is essential to maximise the output of the man in the work. And how do we keep women in that role? Well, sexist biological arguments, financial dependence, and a lack of choice. And how do we keep the man in that role? Sexist biological arguments that fuel the oppression of emotion, financial responsibility, and lack of choice. But modern society now offers that choice, yet we still live under capitalism, so um, maybe uh, something is... Oh yes, the fact that we don't get sick pay, that might fuel it, and the fact that, you know, one person's income isn't enough to live in a house anymore. But with this choice, modern society doesn't seem to choose traditional gender roles. To conclude, the reduction in the trad woman, hashtag girl boss, isn't down to shame or feminist rioting, but rather a result of steps taken towards equality. Of course, the next step would be to make society more equal in the eyes of the traditional male gender role, breaking down the stigma regarding mental health, Health and hypermasculinity, as well as breaking the stereotypes that women are one thing because of their biology, and men are another because of their biology, and so on and so forth. In reality, you can't be a traditional woman in today's day and age, it's a paradox. Maybe that's why so many choose not to be. Thanks for watching this video, I know it was kind of like a big chunky one. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe if you're new. I am getting a lot of new viewers that <laughs> aren't subscribed, so maybe you should just click the button, it's free and you can always change my later. And with that, I should see you soon.